Hello everyone and welcome back. We're continuing along with this uh, middle plate here on our typewriter. Uh, we left off with just sort of like the basic shapes blocked in a couple little details here and there. Um, if we go back to our reference, um, we got to cut out these holes or these uh, slits rather for the keys to go through. A bit more detailing in the middle. Uh, this upper part we have these attachments and then where this ends up feeding into is um, these three pieces up here which essentially house this ribbon um when i look at this i think <laughs> it shouldn't take too long but i don't want to promise that we can get this all done in this part uh, let's just take it piece by piece and sort of see uh, how far we can exactly go i want to continue off with um kind of this middle plate and then we'll go to the bottom and then the top since it's kind of like its own separate um, collection of different pieces we'll, we'll end on that in case we don't get it all done so starting with the middle this should be the easiest by far we have sort of a hole that punches through and a slit that's going through with something sticking into the other end uh, there's a couple ways we can go about this um, I'll probably just have something like a metal um, I want to say slab, but I think that implies that it's large, like a metal sort of tick sort of punched through. This will just be a hole. And then we have two little screws um, in the corners, which should be pretty easy to make. We also have all these sort of rivets here. I'll have to think of an interesting way to do that because this isn't a perfect circle. So rotating um, from a center point isn't going to be the best way to go about that. So we'll see. Because uh, we're also going to do the same technique for the bottom. So we, we'll, we'll figure something out and uh, we'll go from there. But let's start with uh, the stuff that we can do right away. Which is going to be punching a hole in the middle. Um, just so I can sort of gauge where the center of this is, I'm just going to add an edge between the two. I have a hotkey set up for this, but you could also just... Use your cut tool holding shift and dragging along an edge. Just put it at 50. Uh, of course, I don't need to do that. I already got mine lined up. Um, and I can just sort of snap this to the middle so I know it's very centered. I'm going to just delete this edge now. Don't need it anymore. Um, let's see. They seem to be a bit smaller than the screws, but it's still taking up a decent amount of space. Makes me feel like we might need to make this a bit larger, but for now I'll leave it the way it is. Either that or we got to make these screws bigger, which would probably be the easier solution. Yikes, let me get in here and select this loop. Interesting. Okay, so these are two separate things. Let's select both of these pieces and then with our mouse off of everything, go to faces, which should mean we can select faces or both of these. I'm selecting both of these loops. Extending it about that much bigger. Some weird stuff going on here. What is this face? You know, let's uh, let's leave that how it is right now. <laughs> I could tell what was going on. It's just because these edges are not connected and there's too much loose geometry. Uh, that amount of cleanup for this small, small detail probably isn't worth it right now. If we really do want to change it, uh, we can go ahead and do that later. But for now, I'm just going to leave this the way it is. Let's just focus on getting this hole in here, have it punching through, and then we should also get this other cut at the same time. Uh, that guy we are of course going to use, create polygon primitives cube, it's much more cube shaped, thin it out, seems to be straight on and pretty small. 
a bit down and off to the side. Should probably make it a little bit bigger just to exaggerate it. Let's go ahead and combine these guys and do a nice Boolean mesh. So freeze transforms lead history first, open our bool tool, uh, new Boolean operation, clean up, delete history and base objects, did a nice clean cut through for us. Um, so like I was saying, what I'm imagining this is, is some sort of tab sticking through and then something like hugging the back. Um, I'm not entirely sure what that would be or why it would be there. I'm just going to kind of play with the idea for now and see if we can make something that kind of looks cool with it. So let's start by sort of plugging this hole up. So I'm just vertex snapping a cube uh, in order to match the scale of this guy. Center the pivot. I'm going to end up tapering the end off a little bit. It kind of seems like it's tapered. And then just so it fits a bit easier, just kind of shrink it down a little bit. And what I was trying to say by all of this is kind of like have a, um, it's like a metal piece covering both of these guys. So let's duplicate. Or I suppose we could just add an edge loop here, snap it. I want to make sure that these are flush, so I'm just scaling either end. I'm gonna extrude this guy out, extrude this guy out, extrude these down, and we're definitely have some cleanup on this piece, but extrude this up and this is just kind of like a metal piece and that's poking through and it's covering up this end and it's staying on this side i don't know what the purpose of this would be i imagine this has to be attached to something on the other end but it's almost impossible to find reference of that that side of things like this is almost as close as it gets um I'll have to do a lot more research once we do get to the back and I have a suspicion we'll have to clean up a few little pieces. But yeah, like looking at the very back, like we can't really see what's going on there. So I'm just going to plug it up like this, uh, maybe around the corners a little bit and then assume we'll figure out its function later on. Uh, either way, it makes the front look like the reference. So if nothing else, uh, we've accomplished that. So I'm just going to grab these edges and snap them to kind of locations where they're out of the way and we're cleaning up the mesh. We don't need all these edges here. Um, this is potentially something we'll end up baking down or at least the majority of it. So I'm not too, too worried about anything, but it's still good practice to kind of take care of the stuff right now. And then we can just select everything, shift, right click, merge vertices. Like I said, maybe I could imagine like a logo or something being like printed onto here. I, yeah, I'm not entirely sure. It seems like some funky business is going on. I guess those weren't welded, perhaps. Strange, oh well. Just merge the verts on that again. Cool, we'll uh, keep that as that is. Let's go back to our reference. Look at this guy, um, right, so we have these. Well, let's start with these little screws. So these little screws are great because they're actually being bolted into this bar. Uh, they have a purpose. We kind of know exactly what they're doing. Um, 
always try and think about how things are properly constructed and I'll start to break these things down into sort of manageable digestible chunks and you'll start to uh, have a better idea as to how it's all pieced together and some some harder to read pieces will um, become a bit more clear if you start to think about the practicality of having things set up um, for an actual tangible purpose so let's get those little bolts into place i'll keep the reference on screen i feel like i should definitely be doing that for the majority of this uh it's just i currently have three monitors and to sort of constrict myself to the real estate of one screen is very um unnatural at this point and that's not me <laughs> trying to flex or anything it's just i'm very much used to um having reference on one side or reference on both sides so i hope you understand let's drop the subdivs on this to like 12 or 16 or something we're baking it down it doesn't really matter uh, i just want it to be easier to work with so i'm putting this up in the corner technically this isn't really lined up so let's actually punch it through so then we can just have a screw going all the way in. Um, we can move our pivot to the center. Freeze transforms lead history in mirror over X. Um, and then we can just do our standard Boolean operation. New Boolean operation. Delete history and base objects. And close it to that guy. Let's just duplicate an existing screw and sort of fit it in there. Snapping to get it lined up into the middle. And then for this guy, what I want to do is just extrude this back. Um, normally I'd cut a Boolean into this. I think it's literally impossible to <laughs> see that angle especially with limited lighting um so i'm going to just leave it like that it's very unnecessary okay we got those guys in there cool let's focus on getting this kind of lined pattern um so i haven't really put a ton of thought into how exactly i'm going to approach this other than knowing we're going to have to do a little bit of math uh that's not too surprising but it's also um something i might pause the video for if i don't figure it out too quickly but it should shouldn't be too complicated it's essentially going to be a series of boolean cuts very shallow cuts making sure it's not going all the way through and in theory this shouldn't work because it's not a perfect circle but I mean that might be good enough like i'm just worried like this angle is great because it's straight down and this is the bottom this angle is great because it's 45 degrees perfectly horizontal but something like this let me turn off wireframe maybe that's what's throwing me off i suppose these cuts should be good so let me show you how i would sort of figure out how to space these guys out properly so i've counted the amount of cuts here is 42. let's start by rotating this guy so he's at a perfect 45 degree angle uh, i also of course want to skinny him out a lot it's definitely way too thick so i want to freeze transform delete history and we need to have 42 cuts between here and 180 degrees i might actually make it less because if we look the cuts aren't completely from one side to another so let's have it 
start at minus five degrees and go all the way to, what would this be? Would be 165 would be the opposite, right? One seventy. Okay, let's see. Zero. So five degrees is right above this line. Right above this line is one seventy. Okay. So to move one hundred and seventy degrees, we know we have to do seventy-two even cuts. So let's go to file or sorry, edit. Duplicate special, um, rotate, we are rotating along Z, goes X, Y, Z. So we have to rotate 170 degrees. Um, and the number of copies we want between there is 42. So let's apply that. Interesting. Why did it do that? Let's see. Copy, parent, number of copies. We want 42 copies. Oh, wait, sorry. I need to do the actual math part. <laughs> Let's pop open our calculator. Um, the issue is, is we need to, this determines every how many angles do we, or how do I explain this? We do a different copy 42 times every 170 degrees, which we don't want that. We want 170 degrees divided by 42 copies is about 4.05, give or take. So we can do rotate 4.05 degrees and let's make 42 copies. Of course, that is going the wrong way. We want that to be negative. Nice. We mathed. We did it. Um, spacing seems a little bit off. Let's make this guy a little bit thicker. Um, in order to do that, I'm going to Grab our vertices and go to normal and just pull that out because I deleted the transformation so we don't have that information anymore. Let's change that back to world. And let's try that again. So that seems pretty good to me. My issues are that the spaces between here and the spaces between here aren't totally even just because this is like a perfect circle. Well, this isn't. But the catch to that is we might be able to mesh combine these guys um, and squish it to match the shape. And this totally works, this works too. because so we ended up squishing a circle to create this shape. Um, wow, this is working out so much better than I, <laughs> than I honestly thought. Um, I'm gonna go into my front view and just isolate these guys so I have a better idea as to what's going on. Excuse me. I just want to make sure the spaces seem all relatively even, which they do. Wow, this seemed to turn out really good. Um, <laughs> let's, before I celebrate too much, let's actually do the Boolean operation and see how that holds up. I don't know if I want to cut in all the way. Let's, let's start by cutting in all the way and see how that turns out. Um... Right, so let's go ahead and freeze transform, delete history, open up our Boolean. 
And let's save before we do anything, just in case something blows up. Okay, let's go ahead and do this. New Boolean operation. This is a bit deep, so what I'm going to do is just pull this guy a bit forward. Right, because I'm trying to get these grooves, and they do seem decently deep, but like not super pressed through. And they're going to shallow out when we do end up smoothing it in ZBrush, so I'm not trying to do anything too crazy. Uh, and this is all going to be baked down, so. Okay, let me see one last thing. I'm going to do our little trick where we grab the vertices and move them by normal, which is definitely going to chug this computer. But I want to get it to be a bit more even. Cool, go back to world, clean up, delete history and base objects. Wow, that looks very janky, but it works. Um, I am gonna do a little bit of cleanup on this just because it hurts my soul to uh, look at geometry like this. Um, oh my goodness, this is horrible. Oof, okay, thank God we don't have to actually use this. And we can just bake it down. The thing is we are gonna technically have to reuse this geometry when we make our low poly. Um, and that's why I'm just gonna quickly clean this up. This is just gonna be a super quick pass. Um, and the reason, yeah, I'm doing this is because we will kind of repurpose this later on. Um, so if we don't do this now, we'll have to do it later. Might as well just bite the bullet and get it done. And I'm just snapping these verts that are like really close to each other, but not actually um, merged, which seems to be completely dominating this thing. So let's just, in hindsight, I should have done that before this because then I could have just done half and merge it over. But um, we didn't do that, <laughs> so I can't really go back. Um, let's just do the inner row first. Then we'll do the outer row. Not too much I can really commentate on here. So it might be a little bit dry. Um, Just very basic stuff. I might even go ahead and just speed up this part. So uh, if you had the same issue, just go ahead and uh, vertex snap everything on top of each other. Do a nice little cover of your entire mesh. Um, put on some good music or something. People find these parts very tedious, but uh, sometimes if you've just had like a pretty long day or you're just like, you know, having some chill out art sessions, uh, it can be pretty nice. So just sort of uh, enjoy this part for a bit um, but yeah I'm definitely running out of things to say so feel, feel free to skip ahead uh, you know exactly what's going on right now I'm just going to continue with this um,
Okay, we are definitely getting there. Eventually, and then we, we still have to do the outside ring. So not really. Um, one thing that you could do if you find yourself in this situation is to just select all the verts and then just um, shift right click and hit merge and then turn the threshold up a little bit. The thing is some of these parts that I don't want to be combined are dangerously close. This one I would just do it for but some of them uh, not so much. There's a bit too much space in between them. So I'm just opting to do it manually. I don't really mind right now. Um, it's like eight o'clock on a Tuesday, so I'm just in a very mellow mood. I'm just happy to <laughs> get to use Maya, to be honest. <laughs> it's kind of like my favorite thing right now after using 3ds Max all day. Um, since I have you here and I'm just chatting, uh, one of the things I was planning on doing after this is, well, first of all, I just want to do some more fun projects that are very strictly like, hey, I'm making art for the sake of having a good time. Um, but I, now that I have proper experience with both um, Maya and Max, I definitely want to do a video explaining how to transfer from one program to the other very smoothly. There's a couple tutorials online. Uh, where they go over um, converting, but I find that they're very surface level. Um, and I definitely didn't have any uh, super helpful videos that I could find when I was switching um, softwares. So I think, yeah, now that I have a couple months experience with Max, that might be my next sort of tutorial project. We'll see though. I'm a uh, after this guy's done, like I said, I'm not going to be dying to dive into another tutorial uh, for a little bit, uh, simply because this guy, like I've already been working on for several months now, <laughs> and we are definitely making something that I'm happy with. Um, but as far as as turnover rate, like the amount of content that I've put out has not been uh, too, too much. I'm definitely not happy with that. I'd like to have more posts on ArtStation, more things I can regularly show off. Um, so uh, yeah, I'll probably just be doing some more fun personal art um, before I dive back into anything else. Uh, that being said, I've also mentioned that I'm doing some, some contract work on the side. It's very light, but um, I definitely have a soft spot for Decagon. They kind of helped me get my foot in the door as far as this industry goes. So always happy to do some work for them. And that's what I'm doing right now. Always keeping busy. I don't know. You have to kind of really kind of live and breathe this stuff because it just changes so much so fast, right? So I'm kind of always... <laughs> always juggling too many projects at the same time. Okay, we're getting there. The side seems to be faster since we can see it all um, from one angle. Okay. We are getting dangerously close. So <laughs> we're gonna have to do this at the bottom again. I'll make sure I don't do a similar mistake because this uh, is a little bit too time consuming.
cool. That is that. Let's go ahead and merge. I'm noticing that this kind of feathers out at the end. I don't know if I like that, um, but it is part of this. So let's shift select both of these guys, select our vertices outside of the mesh. I'm going to scale this out. And then scale these guys in. Just try to round this out more than anything. Cool. So that's that part. Nice, nice. Happy with how that turned out. Uh, let's do our cuts on the bottom. This one should go a lot smoother. Um, of course, talking about these guys, we have this gap, this gap, uh, and then 42, and they seem to go right to the edge. Um, just the one thing I want to make sure is that it's pulled out far enough. I want to say that Um, oh, it seems our verts aren't merged. Weird. It seems almost like this is pulled out more forward. So I kind of want to do that. Excuse me. Um, let's select these. I feel like, uh, honestly, like I, I've been trying to avoid talking about it, but I feel like I've been burping a lot in these videos, so I'm very sorry about that. Okay, let's pull that forward a bit. Seems to match the reference a little bit better, to be honest. I have to pull these guys forward too. This is still not very round. Maybe I'll just have it be a little. Slightly different and manually do it on each side. Yeah, that should be better. Okay, let's get these cuts in. We'll start to place some of these guys up there. Um, yeah, realistically, we're not going to get all of this down in this part. This might just be altogether kind of like, I don't know, just a shorter part in general. It is kind of late. It is, like I said, a weekday. I've been getting up pretty early recently, so <laughs> I don't want to be stuck doing this all night. Um, not that I don't enjoy it, of course. It's just that, uh, you know, life and stuff. So let's do something very similar where we bring in a cube um, the thickness on these seem very weird to me because they're incredibly thin. And not only that, it looks like the tips are rounded. So I kind of want to bevel them kind of like that. Skinny it up. It's kind of like that. And it cuts all the way through because the keys are feeding into it from the other side. Um, we're going to do a very similar technique as to before. Let's place our pivot at the top and the middle as close as we can to kind of the center of a circle, even though this is a very imperfect circle. We can. Um, Rotate it to the position in which we would imagine it starts. So it kind of looks like it starts about here. And I'm just keeping an eye on the rotation. It seems like 
let's just say 70. I want to say 72. Let's say 72 is the angle that it starts at. Um, and then it would end at minus 143. So we're moving it negative 143 degrees, or should I just round that to a negative 144? We're moving it negative 144 degrees. Let's do some math. Uh, 144 divided by the 42 times we have to do it means that we're moving it 3.42, uh, 3.428 degrees for every time we duplicate it 42 times to get it to that position wow math very exciting uh, as long as our pivots in the right spot we should be good to duplicate special hit the options box and um, change this number to minus 3.43 3 and we should be able to apply it does that almost perfectly because we, of course, don't have a perfect circle here. Okay, let's see if we can get this to Trying to find equal distance here. Hmm. Trying to find a way to evenly move them all to the middle. Because um, there's the obvious, like, oh, I could manually pull it in. But at that point, there's no point in doing the smart duplicate. So this is what we originally got. I'm wondering if we can do sort of like a deformer. Or if I can go to like a deform nonlinear bend and then see if we can bend it in a weird way. Um, obviously this is very incorrect. <laughs> Let's rotate it 90 degrees. Maybe turn that upside down actually. Oh, this is actually kind of working. Okay, so I just sort of repositioned the bend to be facing down, kind of the opposite of it. I just want to bend it so that this is even. The issue then is these guys aren't fanning out properly. Let me just try delete history to get rid of that guy. Pull it up, scale it in. Yeah, like the centers are good with the ends, it just aren't fanning out properly. Um, 
Let's just press Control Z a bunch. Wait, history. I mean, I suppose that. <laughs> can't believe I didn't try that. Just literally scaling it horizontally rather than vertically, which at least solves everything. At least we <laughs> thought of some unique ways to sort of go about it. And yes, these aren't all perfectly even, um, but I really don't think that matters. It's very, very minimal. Um, So yeah, it goes pretty much right up there. I am going to, of course, toy with it a little bit by um, grabbing all the vertices and going to normal and just kind of scaling it in. Seems like these are very, very like, it's like pencil thin almost. I'm gonna try that. Let's try and do a Boolean like this. Uh, freeze transform fleet history. Let's do a save, of course, before we do anything crazy like this. Um, and yeah, these ends look very thin. So maybe what I'll do is just sort of grab, grab all the ones. About yay far. This is one, two, three, four, five, six away. One, two, three, four, five, six. We'll grab this guy. We'll grab normal. Scale them all up and then we'll grab the remaining ones and do the same thing, but just less intensely. So they're a bit more uniform now. So in theory, they're not 100% perfect, but they are pretty damn close, um, which is good enough for me. <laughs> Scale this in, so it's a bit of a tighter fit. Um, but more than anything, we should just give it a shot. Let's go ahead and save in case this totally blows up in our face. Let's grab our Boolean, DC Bool Manager, click, shift, click our Bool Mesh, new Boolean operation. And that guy cuts pretty clean. That's looking pretty, uh, pretty accurate to how this is. For the most part, let me actually thin these out. These just seem very thin. I find that odd. Normally I'd want to exaggerate the shape, but it's like, if I don't exaggerate it, there's a chance I might be able to bake it down. So, <laughs> Fleet history and base objects. Like that's the same. Right? No, it's not. These are definitely a little bit bigger. Okay, I think I finally Okay, I think I'm def like just definitely overthinking it. They need to be big enough to fit something through it. Let's go with that. <laughs> um
You know what I think it is? I think what it is is that these seem closer and there's less space between these guys. So, in theory, what I actually have to do is um, let me delete everything and let's just kind of do this, which I know is annoying. Um, but let me just do this again, but keep them all tighter. Where on earth is my pivot? Oh, it's set to normal, that's why. But we know what we're doing now, so it'll be fast. I'm going to move that guy there. Freeze, transform, delete history. We'll start it a bit lower, say about here. Something even like 67 degrees. Or even sixty six, we will freeze, transform, sleet history, and to be in the same spot on the other side, it moves minus one hundred and thirty two degrees. So, calculator. 132 degrees divided by our 42 movements is 6.2. Okay, so we can do edit, uh, duplicate special. I just forgot what the number was. Why would I close it? It was 132, right? Yeah. 132 divided by 42 is 3.15. 3.14. Minus 3.14. One, two, three, one, two, three. Um, yeah, these are definitely closer, but they're thicker, so it's kind of deceiving. But they're lower down, so they have less space. Let's go ahead and thin them out. Let's try and boolean. I mean, I'm definitely happier, um, happier with the amount of space that's in between them. Like if I turn off wireframe, that seems like a nice density. I just kind of want it to taper in a bit more, I guess. And if I hit Control Shift I, I can select the bottom ones, just inverting the selection. I can make that a bit bigger. Um, go ahead and delete history and base objects. There we go. That's something I'm much more happy with. Nice. Nice. Looking good. Okay. Um, so, yeah, we have these top pieces. They're very much their own beast um, entirely. Uh, one thing I will say is that these guys 
kind of seem to go up and wrap around the top. I have the top in a position where there's no way you can really wrap around. So what I'm gonna do really quickly is extrude this up a little bit. And what I mean is like this plate, this plate, and this plate, they go up and you can see they're curved. Like you can see the light, they're curved and going back down, which means um, they have to be wrapping around this in one way or another. So, um, I need to let it be physically possible because we can't wrap underneath if this is literally pressed against it. Um, so let me clean this up a little bit and then we can sort of extrude it up. So when we do get to that part, probably, um, definitely in the next uh, video, we have some sort of place to wrap it around. But the exciting part is, um, if next video we get all this stuff done, which we, we definitely should, like this is something we can duplicate over. This seems very simple. And then this is a little bit more complicated, but it's 100% gonna get done in less than an hour. Um, once we get that done, we are actually doing the keyboard. And the keyboard is the last part because it goes into the back and all of that. And it's gonna take a while, of course, but like that is literally it. That is the, the last part. And then we're done this phase and we're moving into ZBrush. So it's like so, within our grasp um that's freaking awesome very cool so yeah i clean that up so that i can literally just extrude this up a little bit so then when we have those pieces they can wrap around the back and get sort of tucked in there uh, that's <laughs> pretty much it to be honest suppose i can clean that up a little bit better first of all we don't need these There's the verts. This stuff could also be cleaned up. This is uh, very much something that could be cleaned up, but... <laughs> It's definitely not something we're going to tackle right now. That would take uh, probably a whole part on its own. And we don't need to do that right now. Cool, cool. Merge those guys up. Uh, and that'll probably do it for this part. Let me give this guy a different color so he stands out a little bit. Um, now blue's kind of our placeholder -y color. We'll give him yellow. Cool. Uh, we got some cool stuff done in this part. I'm really liking having something in the middle. Like some of these angles like this, for example, really show how much we've we've really accomplished. Um, and I'm very, very happy with that. So let's keep it going. Let's get the top of this part done in the next video, and then we'll move on to the keyboard, which is going to be definitely several stages, but, um, it's a beast I'm excited to sort of tackle. This part is what I'm worried the most about, to be honest, finding an interesting way to extrude all of it. Um, like perfectly and uniformly um, this part's really easy and then this part not so much the side and then the back I'm gonna have to do a lot more research on that but like it's like at a point where we can count on one hand how many things are left to be done so I'm not gonna drag this on anymore thank you guys for watching this part and I will catch you in the next part where we finish this guy off all right. 
See ya.